Hello, everybody, and welcome back once more to Anime Yay or Nay. I am the Outback Al. I'm Hot for Justice. I'm Chibi Noob. I'm Envy Jetters. I'm Cheer and Cosplay. And I'm Cozy. And it's our first one of the year. It's the first Anime Yay or Nay of 2022. Anyone got any New Year's and resolutions? It's actually an anime any? this time. Yeah, well, I mean, it had to be if we're going to start the year with it. Anyone got any New Year's resolutions or anything they want to talk about? Or are we just done with those at this point? I not know. catch I COVID in 2022. <laughs> Uh, Good enough for that. me. That, uh, I mean, I guess there are some like intentions to like keep up good habits, but that's about it. <laughs> yeah, that's I think is about as solid a thing as anyone can aspire to right now. Yeah. So, this one, this movie, who we watched this week, we watched Millennium Actress, which was free on YouTube with ads, or free on YouTube in general if you have an ad blocker. Mm -hmm. This was uh, one of the Satoshi Kon films, one of the few that he made before he passed in 2008, I want to say. And, uh, yeah, we, we've almost watched all of his stuff at this point, haven't we? Other than, like, maybe some, uh, some other shows that he did, like, art on as opposed to directing. Yeah. So, what did, I've seen, who's here has seen this before? I think you might be the only one. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. What did, what did you guys end up thinking about it? I called that shit from the beginning. Called what shit from the beginning? <laughs> oh, that, like, she was actually cursed and living out all those lives. Huh? Wait, those what? were all the movie roles that she did, weren't they? Yeah. I yeah. thought she was just, like, remembering her life through the roles that she did. Yeah, that's a little what bit I of that. Was. Yeah. She's actually cursed. That's why she kept seeing the old woman. So, no, the old woman is her. Yeah. Uh huh. She is the old lady. The bent neck lady situation. Yeah, it was like her from the future kind of. I mean, she kind of said at the end that she didn't want to be, want to meet the guy again after she was yeah, old. Yeah, she she never wanted to actually find him. No, and that's part of the fun of it, and I think that's a that was a nice line to end on, but. Yeah. Yeah. So, this movie is about okay. We had one person say what they thought. What about what about the, everybody else? Um. I liked it. Uh, I I thought it was really interesting getting to see like all of the period pieces, um, you know, that like were, you know, being made around the time of like World War Two, because as far as like Japanese culture around um, that time, um, I'm I don't I'm not really familiar with it all that much. Um, so it was nice getting to see like, you know, even though, yes, it's technically access powers japan like just sort of like mm -hmm. the kind of stuff that they were you know making for theaters and stuff like that um yeah as well as just sort of uh how like basically she used like her roles as like sort of like a way for her to like you know keep you know living this like dream i guess of hers where she like is pursuing um the man with the who she gave her red scarf to at the beginning of the movie yeah um the one she got the key I from just, yep um and just like how it's like the thrill of the chase is like kind of what kept her going um and that the whole thing is is just like she was just there for the chase and you later obviously find out what happened to the guy um and it's just kind of it's really sad it's more like a bittersweet note that it ends on um but I thought it was, you know, like, it was cute, like, but bittersweet, so. Yeah, I think a lot of his movies tend to leave those kind of notes at the end. Mm-hmm. Um, I felt like it was just Citizen Kane, but watchable. <laughs> oh, <laughs> snap. I can kind of see that a little bit. Kind of like a, someone... Kind of getting a the review C of their life C story. I was very confused. I yeah. mean, it's Satoshi mm. Kon. They do tend to trip in and out of, like, uh, here's reality, here's the past, here's the fantasy, here's all the things and sort of mishmash, which, like, I think to some degree I always really liked about his work because I kind of think that it kind of... It reminds me of, like, how an actual person might remember things in their head. It's all a bit of a mishmash of, like, kind of just sensory stuff. You remember one moment, then another moment, and they all kind of flow into each other a little bit. 
I mean, I think so, the two yeah. biggest okay. things for the movie that makes it unique, whether you like it or not, is deciding, okay, what actually happened in this woman's life or what was a role that she was playing. And then seeing the, I guess, the two filmmakers that were doing the documentary, what they would be like going, they're going along with the story that this woman's telling, but at the same time, they're also acting like they're a part of the story as well. That's kind of abstract in a way too. Well, yeah. I think the one was basically more of like a big fan of hers. So he like knew all the roles that she played and like how all the films went. So for me, I feel like he was like play acting along with her as she was like going through it. Yeah. Yeah, I think that was exactly what was going on for a while. Because like, I think it probably like helped her uh, remember things a little bit better to like be kind of in the moment with that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. But just like you, it was just like the different scenarios when they were going like to Manchuria or something like that, and you have those feudal warlords battling each other, and then you have these two, <laughs> this one guy in a suit and the other guy with a big camera going around and <laughs> doing stuff like that. Yeah, I, I kind of feel like I can keep track of most of it, the majority of it, uh, because I mean to be fair, a lot of the films are very that she was in were very genre based films. So as soon as you start seeing. Oh, she's dressed like a feudal lord's wife. She's dressed like a ninja. And and that sort of thing. You kind of start going like, okay, this is definitely part of one of the movies. And then, like, it, it kind of depends on who you're seeing in the fantasy. But part of the thing about the movies was that it was also interwoven with her real-life memories. Yeah. yeah. Like, she wasn't remembering it perfectly. I think to some degree, yes, and to some degree, no. I think it was just kind of one of those things where, like, she happened to be cast to begin with in some roles that she was able to draw from, like, her own experiences with, which is probably why she was, like, such a good actress to to everybody, like, out the gate. And I'm not sure entirely. I can't speculate as to what this person's whole career would have been, but she might have kind of gotten sort of typecast as just the girl constantly looking for someone. Which, I mean, if you're going to cast her as someone, she's going to do great at that, because that's all she is sometimes. I mean, she ended up being in a not-Godzilla film, so... (laughs) Yeah. I mean, yeah. Although I think, like, that's kind of is what makes her, like, the perfect person for that role, is because her emotions for Mm -hmm. that sort of situation are very raw, because for her, that situation is very real. Yeah. So... I kind of like that they had her memories blending in with the movies, because, like, that's also how I look back on my life, is, like, the different fandoms, the different hyperspixations I've had. Like, yeah. Oh, yes. At this point, this is who I was. Yes. Yeah. Big Very agree. True. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. I think one of the good things was, like, they were able to kind of uh, reestablish, like, the reality versus the the movie thing whenever they would like kind of show behind the scenes a little bit like you would see the set or you would see some of the producers or something or you'd start to like kind of kind of pull back and you could like get beyond the fourth wall of it and then you know you're in the moment because like for a minute you were like when they switched to the bombed out city you were thinking like oh is this some sort of like even the people in the movie were going like oh is this a sci-fi movie or something what are we in and like no that was reality they were they were being bombed at the end of the war and they had to get to a shelter so it's yeah, it's, it's, I don't know, it's it's just hard to describe, it's like, it's, there's almost no transition to certain things, but that almost makes it just a more, much more interesting experience, a little bit. Yeah, I thought it was interesting, like, I definitely liked, um, also how Genya Tachibana, I think mm-hmm. is yes. his name, yeah. was mm-hmm. like, is like inserting himself into like different roles and then you find out that he was like actually like there as you know in like the studio as like i guess a newbie um yeah, he was like a production assistant or something yeah mm-hmm. and i was like oh that's cool like i wasn't expecting that um and i don't know i, I thought his like i i liked seeing i guess um you know, when you find out what happens to the painter, and you find out that, like, that, I guess, officer, like, ended up torturing him to death or whatever, um, it's, it's like, oh, 
like i'm glad that we got to find out what happened to the painter from like genya's point of view um i don't know i just thought he was a good addition to the movie i think it kind of helped a little bit because like anytime we're kind of taking things from genya's actual point of view we know what's really happening yeah Mm mm-hmm so, like, we can kind of separate a little bit of, like, that and the fantasy and the old woman who's telling a story that's kind of a compilation of everything she's done in her life a little bit. But, I don't know. It went 2001 A Space Odyssey a little bit right at the end. I kind of like that. Yeah. yeah. I, did. I like that, too. Also, um, if, if Genya ever put out the actual interview he did with her the documentary Mm -hmm. um he would be rich because he literally like caught the moment that killed her oh yeah the earthquake he's a super fan he He would not quoting lines at her (laughs) yeah he would not put out the part where she dies yeah he's a a super fan triggered her death no yeah got a question which of her movies would you guys actually want to see the most? Because huh. um. I think we got a couple of things. We had, uh, there was a nurse looking for, I'm assuming, some sort of lost soldier was the, her first mm-hmm. one. Uh, yep. There was the thing, I can only describe it as Ron, which I it is a Kurosawa movie from a while back. I don't know that any of you guys would know it, but it's, it's kind of a, an amazing visual movie. Then there's the ninja one. Mm-hmm. Then the one where she's a geisha, and there's the rogue samurai. What was after that? I'm a little torn because there's a bit of a transition there where I'm kind of like, okay, was this reality? Was this your, your? It looks like you're doing a period piece thing, but you didn't really get a whole lot of information about it. There was the thing where she was like in jail for something, though that might have still been the geisha thing. I'm not sure. I think that was. That was, like, okay. during the aftermath part of that. Um, and then there was the one where she was, like, oh, yeah, so geisha, but also, like, political activist kind of thing. Right. Because um, I think those two were the same thing, because that right. officer appears um, at that point oh, as well. plus the guy pulling the uh, the thing. Yeah. Yeah, that, that transitions Genya. together. Then yeah. it's Genya. Yeah, mm-hmm. Genya, but, and I, I see he bails her out at the end. Yeah. Sort of a great expectations kind of deal. Mm-hmm. Okay, um, so what's that for that? Like, then I think we get closer into, like, the 50s, like, post-war kind of era where they're right. kind of, like, trying to get back on their feet, and she's sort of, like, doing that one movie that's also kind of, like, um basically she's still searching for the guy and that's when that one um, yeah it's like, modern times for that. the first time yeah so then i'm having to assume that next is godzilla because we really don't see any of yeah. that and then it goes to the space mm-hmm. movie and she quits after that yes so of those seven what are you guys feeling the most the ninja one ninja one I'm kind of in that ballpark, too. Part of me was thinking... I the Kurosawa one. Same. The Kurosawa one I am interested in, but at the same time, I have seen Ron, which is the same reason I'm giving that I'm not going to go with Godzilla, because I have Mm. seen that movie. But I don't think I've seen the Ninja one. So that's kind of what gets me interested. Plus, they were doing, like, a lot of... uh, I honestly would be really impressed with it, because it looks very cool, because it's anime, but I'm also thinking, this is a movie from the... 50s how are they doing this like uh crouching tiger hidden dragon shit i want to see what that would have looked like on screen from a movie from the 50s you're also like a very big kung fu martial arts i wouldn't say huge but yeah no i I enjoy a a well choreographed fight scene so and v what one would you want to see uh i don't know they i i was trying more paying attention to just decide what was real life and what was fantasy, so I wasn't really paying attention to the actual movie. I guess maybe the mm. the, the 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 Kurosawa one. I guess if you want to see that, it's a long movie, but uh, there's a movie called Ron, which stars Toshiro Mifune, 
because of course it does. It's he's he's one of his regulars. Um, who actually I'm gonna say like had a career. I don't want to say similar, but like there was a number of other like actors and directors, like even Kurosawa himself. He he did films for the Japanese army during World War II. I, Not necessarily I in agreement like, with the war, um, but, you know, it was one of those things that you had to do sometimes. I feel like Kong... I think it was noted that he really looked up to him. Kurosawa? Yeah. I don't know how you could be a filmmaker in Japan and not. Dude, like, so, like was... It doesn't surprise me that he would put, like, shout-outs in oh, yeah. there. I actually, and I can't confirm this, but I was thinking that there was one guy in the in one of the shots that looked like Toshiro Mifune. But I can't be absolutely certain. It could have just been a guy with a mustache, but I don't know. Um, but I know he's a big film fan because, like, you look at even, like, uh, we were going to do Papri Paprika next week. That one is head-to-toe with film references to a whole bunch of different things, so. I liked that the art style changed with each movie subtly. And I didn't realize it was happening until that sequence when she was running and it was, like, going through all of her characters. Oh, I like yeah. that. Yeah. That was really cool. The, 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 I was kind of, like, trying to think, like, the chase, well, not really a chase, but the running climax felt like it went on for a while. Not, like, too long, but, like, it felt longer than I feel like I remember it going for. Like, the running chase scene at the end? Yeah. They could have cut that together better than they, they did. I I like the way they cut it together. I just was not expecting it to be as long as it was. And to, like, so, keep well, the pace just, with it. They doubled up everything where they could have just cut back and forth. They could have, yeah. I think, though, the purpose of that choice is to make it clear just how long she's been chasing this man down for like it's been a long time so that i think they were trying to stretch that scene out as much as they could to like give that impression but that's just me i mean I her whole life has been trying to get this key back to a man she probably knew for a long time was actually dead but at the end of the movie she said i love the chase more than i actually loved him <laughs> Yep. Well, yeah, oh, she didn't know him. Yeah, <laughs> she couldn't have loved him. She knew nothing. And I think she was have taught us that love can happen so quickly. I think she was in love with the idea of him. Yeah. yeah. Without a doubt. When do you guys think he died? What? Like, I know he left her that note. Oh, he was tortured to death. But it would be her... Yeah. 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 Like, when, though? Like, um, probably a few weeks after she met him. Probably. Yeah, like, that note was probably, you're allowed to write down, like, your last will. I mean, I am, like, in the movie, or, like, well, obviously in the movie, but, like, whenever she goes to that prison and she sees him being, going to the detention level, I imagine, maybe that was a movie, but I'm also thinking that, that could have happened to her in real life, too, and... No, I'm not sorry, in, in I, the way that I it was. I forgot he wrote a physical note. I meant the painting he did on the wall. Oh, the painting? That was the night that she hid him. Mm. Oh, okay. Yeah. In that case, I think he died the next morning. <sighs> he probably got... He died within 24 well, hours of her well, meeting no, him. I'm he trying did to, get I'm on the train. Yeah, he, he got on the train. She missed the train. She then got the the thing to go to Manchuria. And... I don't know whether he, ever, he would have ever made it to Manchuria. I think more than no, likely so, he got caught in the next station, maybe. I feel like maybe we can infer from the prison scene. Like, in the prison scene, she gets caught, and then, like, almost immediately afterwards, they catch him. So, I think you can infer that's her arriving in Manchuria, and then, like, right after she arrives, like... Maybe. It's possible. Okay. Ultimately, we're not going to know. Like, whatever whatever did happen, we know that... See, I, again, I don't think he made it out of Japan. Because yeah, I, don't, I don't think the detective or the military police or whoever would have followed him across to China. 
I think they would have been like they would have called ahead to the to whoever's there and be like, pick this guy up and send him back. But like, I just think it's hilarious the possibility of her spending her entire life chasing this man that died within twenty four hours of meeting her. I mean, yeah, it's it is what it is. I do kind of like that they constantly had the the detective keep showing up as the evil uh, yeah. enemy in the way of finding this guy. So, like, I know what he was sketching was probably, like, anti-government propaganda, but I do actually earnestly want to know what was under the cloth did she, in his canvas. Did he not show her? I thought he showed her and it was the, the landscape. No. no. He said it's just a sketch. Yeah, he said he needed to finish painting it. And it's probably, like, obviously, he was a dissident. Yeah. Like, he was probably making, like, all the posters and stuff. So, like, that's probably why he kept it covered, and I can acknowledge that. But, like, I want to know. I mean, it's hard to say. I mean, we could probably go and look up, like, stuff about this kind of thing. I don't know how much of it would have survived. But there's probably some kind of, like, dissident art from, uh, the Imperial, uh, times of Japan oh. back in, back in the 30s and 40s. Because at that point, um, I think that was Japan trying to expand oh, yeah. for the first time. I don't think it was quite World War Two yet. Well, it was definitely yeah. in, like... It was right before uh, what we would know more broadly as World War II. But, like, I think they had, like, started out in, like, 1937, kind of, like, trying to expand I looked it up. They were, they were, I, I looked it up. The, the beginning of the conflict was the Sino-Japanese War. That's what they were showing. But that okay. was, that was, that was concurrent with World War II. Yeah. And, like, we yeah, only. Yeah, so they were fighting China then. Yeah. Yeah, they were invading China. And um, to try to take more land. Yeah, well, China and a bunch of other uh, islands and other nations in their general area. Korea was also involved. A whole bunch of other places. I think they even tried to like attack Australia and some other places like that. And then you know, Hitler did his thing. They teamed up, and at that point, then everyone's calling it a world war. And then U.S. gets involved and. You know, everything else goes from there. This is kind of weird to think about it, but, like, me and Yin were talking a little bit about Demon Slayer, which we gotta uh, watch the new season of that at some point, but... Uh, like, this is taking place in that time frame. A little after. I think... I think... She might have been born, like, right at the end of the era that Demon Slayer set in. Yeah, Demon Slayer takes... Like, the era it's set in is, like, early, like, beginning it's like of, like, It's, like, 1912 to 1926 or something? Yeah, there was a very short time span in which whatever emperor that was was ruling, and that's when it takes place. Yeah, so she might be, like, right there at the tail end of whatever Tanjiro and Nezuko and everybody else's stories are, so... Who knows? Maybe they live in the same universe. <laughs> oh. That'd be funny. <laughs> I mean, who knows? Maybe at the end of Demon Slayer, they killed the Michael Jackson. It, all the demons mm -hmm. go away as a result, and and it's suddenly the normal Man. world again. And then we have to Satoshi Kone movies. All she needed to do was breathe funny. Yeah, maybe. But no one's gonna teach you how to breathe funny if there's no more demons. She missed her chance to be a demon. Slayer. gonna That's come and I, slay the old ghost lady. <laughs> but then he's killing her because she is yeah. the old ghost lady <laughs> she is I feel like this is a this is one of those movies we're kind of just like hitting like a lot of surface stuff for the most part but I feel like this is one of those movies that you could rewatch and kind of like try to analyze a couple different things like with the characters or whoever else like oh yeah especially like I think they say it takes like four watches to like really understand a movie if it's a good movie. Mm -hmm. I think you can understand a bad movie pretty easily. 
<laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think yeah. Uh, I think especially like this uh, Satoshi Kone, I think he really liked to put a whole lot of like little details into his work that like um, repeat watches could like give you a new perspective on what was going on. So this is my second time watching it. I don't know that I'm like thinking anything really different from the first time that I saw it. And again, it's been a while. The first time I saw this was over at the uh, the Row House, so I got to actually see it in a theater, which was nice. Oh, that's a good place to see it. Yep. Yeah, that's where I uh, saw Pat Virgo for the first time. Oh, cool. So, what else we got to say about this movie? I mean, her uh, co-worker and uh, her, I guess husband later on was a asshole and a bitch respectively throughout her entire life (laughs) oh yeah definitely (laughs) yeah i was not i was not a fan of either of them well some people are just shitty people that happens yeah i mean the the, the, much older than her i mean like the woman i can at least understand because you know it's jealousy and well, well not hollywood but jealousy jealousy in the film industry and you know Stuff like that, but, like, the older man who's, like, yeah, probably, like, at least 20 to 30 years older than her is like, yeah, go out with me. I, no. don't, I don't know about that. <laughs> I, I think he's he's at most, like, maybe 10 he years older. He was definitely, like, 10 years older. Yeah, because, like, she starts out the her career somewhere around, like, maybe, I'm going to say, like, 16 or something. I think this he's is probably 14. in his mid-20s. Yeah, still, even then. He's probably in his mid-twenties, and by the time they actually get together, she's probably in her late twenties. She is of age, but he's been pursuing her that entire time. Like, that first interaction, like, that was not, like, haha, it was like, he was I'm not saying he's not a creep, but, like, he wasn't 40. Well, even then, like, not even that part, but, like, the fact that, like, her whole life's been about this key, and then it's just like, oh, no, okay, so she loses the key, and then when they had that earthquake, and then they, or at least one of the earthquakes, and then he gets the key and hides it from her for who knows how long. It's like, wow, you're an asshole. You're supposed to be her husband. Yeah, no, he's an asshole. I mean, that's that's not, like, <laughs> really a question at any point. <laughs> Like you can tell from the way that the uh, oh. that uh, Genya's constantly looking at him every time he's brought up is like, yeah, no, this guy's an asshole. Yeah, she she didn't lose it the first time in the earthquake. He had the other actress steal it. Yeah, oh, she, that's like, right. Yeah, she just had like a moment where she kind of like uh, just having a bit of a uh, a time with herself, I guess. Midlife crisis. Yeah. Yeah, something like that. But wait, yeah, he had the other actress steal it, specifically so she would marry him. Because he made the move, she, like, remembered her key existed, and she's like, oh no, I have my key man. Of course you got your key man. (laughs) Everyone needs a key man. But at the end of it, she's not really a great person either. How so? Because she never actually, like, cared what happened to this man. She just wanted to chase an idea. Don't we all a little bit? Like, he was just her excuse. Maybe. I mean... Do we know what, what when the end of the movie takes place? Like, the present day? Um, no. Well, so. they have digital video cameras. I would say this, this, is, this movie came out in 2001. I would probably yeah. say it's meant to be modern times, more or less. More or less, okay. yeah. Well, if he would, well, so here's the thing, though, is, like... never got to experience AO3. Well, my thing is, like, they say that she was retired for, for 30, 30 years. years. Godzilla came out in 90, 1954, so... Yeah, maybe so they, that, ma- Maybe the night... So maybe another last, year or two between her, Godzilla and the last one? So her last film was a space movie. I would think that would be somewhere around like the 60s, early 70s. I would think late 50s, early 60s, because they probably want to keep her in movies. Like even if like the Godzilla thing was coming out later than actual Godzilla, maybe it was a ripoff Godzilla or something. We got to put that. I, I think the latest that space movie was happening. Well, actually, hold on. 30 years, 2001, hold 71. Up, hold up. I'm thinking we actually have a point of, of reference. 
the the space launch that they showed right, on that's TV. That's what I said. So that's wait, why that I said one? like late sixties, early seventies. God, late sixties. Also, they they did say she disappeared for a while. Well, yeah, that's what yeah. they said. It was like, uh, well, she could have been like gone that long running around. I mean, but well, I think she may. Well, the thing is, is like, and this is a common thing with like the like i guess like just with like japanese work culture and this is also a common thing with like the film industry there as well but like when a woman gets married she basically drops her career like yeah. she'll stop the film industry she'll stop acting she'll stop doing whatever and she'll be a housewife so if she dropped from the film industry for a while that could have been the period where she was married okay i'm gonna throw this out there uh they specifically said she disappeared in a Hokkaido. Because that's when she got the key back, wasn't it? Yeah. But that was happening at the studio. Hmm. Well, no, so she didn't get the key. She, she gets the key back. She then loses the key. No. No, she doesn't. So Hang on. She finds the key. She confronts her husband. Right. But then that's, the that has the, guy the thing in the up. background. Yeah. Which I think might have been the, the Mercury Seven program. When that happens. Which is sixty-one to sixty-three. I'm gonna look up earthquakes in Japan in the sixties. Hang on. <laughs> this is wow. too much just for my joke about AO3. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, earthquakes are fairly common in Japan. I know, but, like, a big one? Okay, so, while we're talking about that scene, I like how it, it seemed like she was in a house, and then it fell away to a, a set piece. Yeah. It's yeah. like, you didn't see this much of the house in the set, yeah. so, so, like, I'm kind of wondering how much she remembers. Like, she might not remember what wasn't... Part yeah, of the movie I, th or not. I think that's part of where, like, she was just sort of playing a role, and I think that's why I was doing that sort of thing. We're talking about where she found the key, yes. Okay, so I think that was because she was playing the role of a housewife at that point, which is why it turned into a set. But that's just my speculation, and it was kind of sort of symbolic of how she's, like, playing a role, and that's not actually her. Um, but that's my speculation, so. It's Satoshi Kon. No, it's no, I agree with you, because, like, the whole thing is, like, she's mixing her own reality into the plot of these movies. Mm-hmm. Because they weren't all about returning a key to a man. But, uh, going off of, you know, the question about the space rocket like uh, wouldn't that kind of be based a little bit off of 2001 space odyssey which came out in everyone 68 off. yeah everyone was sort of doing it at that time the only reason why i was questioning about the timing of everything is because like i was i was more basing it off of like how old gen would be because like if he was like in his like late teens early 20s when he started out he would have to be at He's least in his 50s Okay, in his 50s, yeah, because, like, I didn't think he'd be that old, but... I'm trying to see if anyone did a Millennium Actress timeline. That scene where he saves her. Um, how rude. She doesn't remember the man who saved his life, and I was like, well, he kind of had a baby face then. He's pretty old and now. Also She's she, old. Her memory's she probably slipping. Yeah. And then they, a... they say those lines. They turn around and said those exact lines back to us. To be fair, yeah. she kind of had an existential crisis the, immediately after that happened. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because that's when she goes running. But didn't she say in the movie, though, that she remembers him after all or something like that? So she does remember him, but she needs her memory jogged in order to remember him. And like, not only does this movie reference Ron, it also references Throne of Blood. Yeah, it's another good one. That one's on HBO Max. I'm going to rewatch that one pretty soon i think but i was thinking ron because there's there's a big battle scene at the end of it that 
just has, like, more flaming arrows flying everywhere than you can imagine. Which, I... I can't confirm this for sure, but I think I had heard were actually being fired around the actors. Ooh. Like, for real. They Yikes. just got some... Oh, they got like some Hunger Games. Really good archers, and Toshiro Mifune is just a method man, so... He was just like, you know, shoot him. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, method acting? Because Dude's a beast. I, watched I mean, documentary it's going about to him. give you the Dude's most genuine reaction if you're oh, he, actually here's the thing. dealing the with thing the about, head on. Hmm? The thing about the majority of the scene is he's... Uh, Ron is based on King Lear, and it's kind of right. near the end of the movie, and he's kind of, like, lost his mind a little bit at this point. Uh-huh. Um, he's not reacting to the arrows. At all. Ah. Like, that's kind of the thing. <laughs> well, They're I mean, flying he goes around blind by like, that point, doesn't he? I don't know that he was blind at that point in the movie, but he has no, definitely, I mean, like, lost everything. I, no, I thought King Lear went blind at that point, like, towards the end of the play. <sighs> I forget. So. I have to reread it. Hmm. I could be wrong. I don't remember him go- going blind, actually. I don't, I'm not sure. Well, I know he goes, he definitely goes insane, yeah. for sure. And, like, pretty much everyone dies. Yeah. So. Spoiler, but. Well, it's one of Shakespeare's it's tragedies. Been out, it's been out for a, a while. A lot of people die. How dare you spoil a 500 year plus old story. I mean, if you haven't read it by now, or at least looked up a summary on the internet, I I can't help you. I'm sorry. You're not joking. I know. Are you still looking up earthquakes? No, I'm looking up Ron because okay. I kind of want to rewatch it, but I, like I'm trying to remember how long is this movie? So it's long. This I doesn't know that. help us with like what her age was. Uh. Relatively, but she would have been born in nineteen twenty. Well, they said that they said that, like at the beginning of the movie when she first became an actress and went to Manchuria, she was fourteen. So, Mm, I feel like she's probably like late seventies, early eighties by the end of like the end of her life. More or less, just call it that, (laughs) because it's like end of the movie. It's like she's been ages throughout this entire thing, and she's multiple ages by the time the movie gets to the end. Oh, I got it wrong. <laughs> Mifune was not in Ron. Was uh, Tatsuya Naka, Nakada, Nakade. I'm probably pronouncing that terribly, but yeah, no. And I looked it up. The, your, to answer your question, Ron is, two, according to Wikipedia, it's two hours. Two hours, and, 42 yeah, minutes. So. Mifune was in Throne of Blood, though. And Seven Samurai. And Yojimbo. And the Hidden Fortress. And Rashomon. I think Redbeard and... All of the things. All of his stuff. In, in other words, if uh, if uh, uh, if Kurosawa wanted to make a he's movie... He's his guy. <laughs> he's his guy. He's his guy. They had a falling out later, but he's his guy. They had a falling out later. Yeah, they, they reconciled mm-hmm. eventually, but, you know. Oh, yeah, he was also in High and Low. I love that one. I'm just gonna... I'm, I'm gonna find a whole bunch of Kurosawa movies and start watching them now. I do want to see Seven Samurai and the Hidden Fortress one day. Those are, like, his two movies I want to see. I recommend Yojimbo a lot. Um, well, here's the thing. Hidden Fortress and Seven Samurai, especially Seven Samurai, has been in, referenced and parodied and ripped off so many freaking times that i feel like i might as well just see yojimbo i feel like i might so his so his rashomon rashomon almost created like a whole subgenre for stuff but like the especially with seven samurai like there's been so many stories of people trying to defend uh uh like a village or a group of people from an outside force in so many different ways yeah and he made one but I don't know that it's, it's super specific to to just Kurosawa, even if he made one of the best ones. Yeah. All right. Do we have any final thoughts on this movie? I would say it's probably my least favorite of his feature films, but I still enjoyed it. Tokyo Godfather is still my favorite by like a long shot. Yeah. 
Yeah. I don't think this guy ever made a bad movie. I don't think... In, in all fairness, I don't think he had enough time to. Well, he made Perfect Blue, Millennium Actress, Tokyo Godfathers, and Paprika, right? Those are his four films. Yeah, there, there's also the uh, Paranoia Agent in there. Well, uh, I, did. I didn't count that because that it's was a, a series. TV series. Honestly, it's a pretty good series, though. I can't, I, I, for, if for someone with such a limited uh, filmography, yeah, I think you got to count everything that you can. Well, then Paranoia Agent would be my least favorite then. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Well, I'm a yay here. And uh, so next week, we've covered pretty much everything else from Satoshi Kon, so we, might as well, so we figured we might as well uh, hit the last one that we haven't yet. Paprika, which I'm not entirely sure. This might be his most famous one, at the very least with, like, uh, the Inception comparison, I think. <laughs> I oh, mean... I, I never mean... Heard of it? Um, oh, this might have been before your time in Anime Club. Potentially. Uh, but did, we wa- did we watch this freshman or sophomore year? No, this is our junior Wait. year. Oh, you would have been in club by then. I know, but I didn't see it. That might have been when sheer practice switched to your face. Oh, uh, okay. Well, that would suck. Well. Yeah, I just stopped going. Okay. I have a solid answer for when the space movie was. It <laughs> was mid '60s. <laughs> That's what I was kind of thinking, because I looked up the the launch that she was looking at while she was being a housewife, and I think that was the Mercury Seven project, which was '61 to '63, where they had a couple things like that. It was before the lunar landing, mm-hmm. so somewhere in the mid '60s, probably. I think you're right. Yeah, which then sets this somewhere in the mid to late 90s. Our our modern times. Which makes sense. This came out in 2001. They would have been working on it in the late 90s. He's chasing this fictional man because the poor girl never got to see AO3. (laughs) I think you're a little stuck on AO3 here. (laughs) Paprika next week if you want to talk AO3. (laughs) Paprika's a really good movie. I'm excited. Yeah. Come join us for that, and we'll let you know what else we're going to be uh, taking a look at this month and for the rest of the year. We, we might be planning some things, we might not. Who knows? You're going to find out then. Bye bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Hey, thanks for watching, and if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell icon for notifications. If you enjoy this video, give us a like, and if you haven't already, check out some of our previous episodes, our daily gaming videos, or our parody series, Madoka Magically Abridged. See you next time.